First, Gary McManus is the state climatologist uh, for Oklahoma. He's a native of Buff Buffalo, Oklahoma, and he's been serving in the role of state climatologist since 1999. I'm going to pass over to you to uh, for, for uh, as our first presenter. You should have permission to share your screen now. Um, yes, I'm going to be call, uh, covering Oklahoma's drought and climate trends. I'm um, really going to be talking about drought. Um, so let's get started on the next slide. Uh, let's see. Okay, so um, so last night, of course, we had our uh, promising from five or six days out the storm system. Uh, it's not like we were expecting a, a huge bounty of moisture. We thought we were going to get a big outbreak of severe weather. We didn't get that. We did hope at least if we were going to get severe weather, we would get some uh, some good moisture out of it. Well, this is what we got. So very little rainfall, some good rainfall up in Kay County, uh, over an inch in that area, some streaks of some storms up in northwest Oklahoma. But by and large, nothing or less than a tenth of an inch for the rest of the state. So unfortunately, this is what we've seen uh, several times over the last couple of months, especially up in northern and western Oklahoma, parts of east central Oklahoma. These uh, storm systems move through, and they really just leave us with uh, with more fire danger. So um, we do see this um, out in western Oklahoma, uh, the, the, the red flag fire danger uh, again. Um, areas that haven't seen the, the good green up uh, compared to other parts of the state. And of course, we have low relative humidities. We have winds gusting 35, 45, 50 miles an hour also over in uh, parts of northern Oklahoma. But this is the area where the, the drastic green up has been delayed. So um, again, this is just part of the, the, a little bit of a drought in, in mid spring in Oklahoma when you don't get uh, a green up, you get uh, wildfire conditions generally when you get these types of storm, storm, storm systems moving through. Okay. And of course, that's just part of Oklahoma, land of weather and climate extremes. Uh, this time of year, we can really expect uh, three of out of these four extremes, of course, tornadoes, drought, wildfires, hopefully no snow, is on the way, um, that would be unusual, but it is Oklahoma, so keep that in mind. But uh, when we talk about Oklahoma, uh, that's really a part of our uh, lure here. Um, when we talk about disasters, um, Oklahoma leads the pack of the major disaster declarations from FEMA from the year 2000 through 2023, Oklahoma leads every state in the United States with 56. And in fact, it's not even close. Uh, the next closest is Kentucky at 42. Um, and we're talking about things like tornadoes, severe storms, hail, blizzards, ice storms, et cetera. This does not include drought, however. So if you include all those drought declarations from the USDA, then of course that number goes way up. And I don't think anybody's going to catch us even if you include drought. So, uh, but it is very unusual that we are so much above uh, these other states. So again, part of part of living in Oklahoma is getting used to these sorts of things. And drought, um, unfortunately, over the last uh, 10 to 15 years has certainly roared to the top of that list. We're going to take a look at our 2021 through 24 drought. We are still in drought. It's a little bit debatable where that drought ended. I'm going to say it didn't. Um, but when we take a look at this drought uh, over the last two and a half years plus, it was fueled by three separate flash droughts. Now, it started in August of 2021 uh, when we started that uh, triple dip La Nina, the first year of that uh, three years of La Nina. Um, it got started a little bit slow, but it was the beginning of the drought. And then in December 2021, that's when the drought really took off. That's our first flash drought that really fueled the, the severity of this drought to begin with. Um, it's very unusual to see uh, a flash drought in December uh, in the Southern Plains, but it was so drastically warm. It was 10 degrees above normal in December. And in fact, it's the warmest December by more than five degrees, which is absolutely unheard of in our modern climate record to beat a previous 
uh, record by that amount for a monthly temperature, but we sure did, and we had all sorts of wind. Um, so that's the first flash drought. We did have some uh, uh, relief in the spring of uh, uh, 2022. When we got to late June, we only had 31% of the state in drought. And then, of course, uh, in June of 2022, we also ended all that precipitation and we had our second flash drought. Uh, and that also fueled a lot of severity and brought the drought back to the rest of the state that had seen relief earlier that spring. And also we suffered the hottest summer since 2011, uh, that summer of 2022. And of course, uh, in Oklahoma, those hot summers go hand in hand with the big time droughts and they do tend to fuel each other. Mid-October 22, we saw the drought peak um, for this whole uh, flash drought or the whole drought episode 2021 through 2024. That's when it was at its worst, mid-October 2022. And in fact, that's the worst uh, or the, the most amount of drought with the worst intensity we've seen since February 2013 during that horrible 2010-15 drought episode. So certainly uh, October 2022 was not a good time in Oklahoma for drought. Now that first half of summer 2023, once again, we had more widespread relief, uh, drought hanging on in far southwestern and north central Oklahoma due to long-term uh, deficits. But once again, we suffered the flash drought situation in the second half of summer 2023. So similar to the summer 2022, the rains went away and very uh, hot conditions came back. And so flash drought flourished once again. Um, now in the fall of 2023 and early spring 2024, we actually changed the ENSO, the El Nino Southern Oscillation around from that triple dip La Nina and finally, we switched it around to El Nino, which for Oklahoma and uh, the, much of the southern tier of the United States can bring you uh, cooler than normal and wetter than normal conditions for the cool season. We did get the, the, the wetter than normal conditions. And so by early spring uh, 2024, we only had 3% of the state in drought. Uh, spring of 2024, it's sort of questionable, but we do have a flashy drought situation going on in northern and uh, western Oklahoma, also parts of east central Oklahoma. And so just in the past few weeks, our drought coverage has increased back to 15% from that 3%, the low spot that we'd seen just a, uh, three or four weeks ago. So I would say once again, flash drought plaguing the state of Oklahoma. It just depends next summer, fall and winter, where do we go from here? Okay. So this drought of 21, 20, 21 through 24, you can see, even though we do have flash drought coming back into uh, Northwest Oklahoma, starting to encroach back into uh, East Central Oklahoma, um, we are certainly much better off than where we were last year, uh, where we had the uh, exceptional drought conditions, the uh, extreme drought conditions, and the severe drought conditions. A little bit of a uh, moderate drought there, the tan color, but uh, the southeastern half of the state, basically it was an I-44 relief situation. Southeastern half of the state or southeastern uh, to the southeast of I-44, we were free of drought, uh, still growing strong, but you can see still this year we're much better off even though we have those drought conditions encroaching back into the state. So if we look back at just the last uh, three and a half years or so, uh, going back to July 2021, once again here in uh, August of 2021, as I said, this is where the drought began. We really uh, punched up those moderate drought conditions. Uh, again, that D1 moderate drought, about a once in every five years type of occurrence. Uh, but still, most of the state was uh, uh, not in those severe to extreme drought conditions. Uh, but then when we got to December 2021, that's when we had that December flash drought, the severity uh, cro uh, crept up and uh, actually accelerated pretty rapidly. Here's the second flash drought after the uh, relief in um, spring of 2022. So uh, starting about June 10th, uh, once again, that drought intensity uh, accelerated very rapidly. And then October of 2022 um, was when we were at the, the worst part of the drought. And this was again, uh, the worst amount of drought that we had seen, and the most amount and the worst conditions 
uh, since uh, 2013 uh, during that horrible drought of the, the previous decade. Um, and then once again, we see the relief as we got into the first half of summer and the parts of spring in 2023 um, and flash drought number three in the second half of summer. And then, of course, our relief through the El Nino winter months um, of 2023-2024. And here we go at the end of that period uh, where we are at currently with the creeping back up again. Not too bad right now, but it still remains to be seen where we go from here. Oops. Okay, current drought conditions, um, as we showed earlier, not too bad. Our current drought con con uh, concerns, I would uh, label those probably conditional. It depends on where you're located, obviously. So if you're down in parts of South Central Oklahoma, Southeast Oklahoma, uh, parts of Central Oklahoma, where they've gotten the better rainfall amounts, probably not too concerned right now, but certainly if uh, you're up in North Central, Northwest Oklahoma, out into the Panhandle region, um, parts of East Central Oklahoma, your concerns are a little bit more elevated than, than what you see in other parts of the state because you are seeing that flash drought continue. And, you know, when you look at the conditions we've had over the last couple of days, highs in the 90s, mid-90s out in uh, northwest Oklahoma, very high wind speeds, very low relative humidity, that's just doing more damage to the, to the ecosystem uh, and, and intensifying that drought. So um, certainly you're more concerned out in that part of the state. Like I said, a little bit of El Nino magic. Uh, here we see Chris Farley from the, uh, his famous uh, Fairy Night Live uh, uh, skit. But El Nino, uh, that uh, warming of the waters off the west coast of South America and the uh, associated disruptions um, in the atmospheric circulation patterns, what it does is it uh, elongates and sort of strengthens that subtropical jet, brings it farther across the southern tier of the United States. But uh, on average, it tends to bring us uh, uh, cooler than normal and wetter than normal conditions. Like I said, we did see the uh, wetter than normal conditions, at least for much of the state, which you'll see here in a minute. So most of the state, this is for October 1st through April 15th. So through uh, yesterday, um, uh, we do see for the uh, water year, uh, lots of good rainfall amounts on here. When you look at the departure from normal through that time frame, uh, southwestern down through south central Oklahoma, parts of southeast Oklahoma, a little bit up here in the north central Oklahoma, they do have the good uh, moisture surpluses. That's by and large where we've reduced that large amount of drought in the state. Uh, all of this drought that was uh, existing down in uh, south central, up into central Oklahoma, uh, certainly we released, uh, relinquished the uh, the severity of the drought down in southwest Oklahoma, southeast Oklahoma, we've eliminated drought and down in that region. But still, even though we had that uh, good amount of moisture, we still have the long-term deficits, uh, creating hot spots of drought that are able to uh, pop up a little bit more readily in those flash drought situations. So over in east central Oklahoma, up in northwestern and north central Oklahoma, and again, that's where we see the flash drought starting to increase rapidly over the last few weeks. Now drought concerns for the spring and summer, I would term those elevated. Even though we are coming up into the wettest two, two months of the year, I would say that the, the two month period. So as we go from mid-April uh, through mid-June, that's really the wettest time of year. That's the sweet spot for the rainy season in much of Oklahoma. Now out in the panhandle, it's more into the summer months, but for the majority of the state, we are uh, approaching the, the main rainy season in Oklahoma, a little bit of a secondary season in the fall. Um, so it's a little bit uh, premature to get too concerned, but as we do see, flash drought is not only, it's not imminent anymore, it's actually occurring across parts of Oklahoma. And we can see from these uh, rainfall maps from the Oklahoma Mesonet, uh, the consecutive days with less than a quarter inch of rainfall in any single day is up to close to 100 days again up in northwest Oklahoma, uh, up to 80 days again up in the Panhandle. Now, we were well above 100 uh, days that way around Slap Out and Beaver. We did reset this map, but it's not like we got a lot of rainfall to reset it. We just uh, got a little bit above that quarter inch of rainfall amount. So still desperately dry out in this area of the state. 
And so we go from the percent of normal rainfall from the last 30 days, and then the last 60 days, and then the last 90 days. It's very easy to see those areas that see the drought starting to increase once again. Uh, of course, up in northwestern Oklahoma, uh, where those areas continue to show up, this little semicircle of, of areas of less than 25% a, a, a of normal to less than 30% of normal rainfall uh, over the last 30 to 90 days, but also over in east central Oklahoma over the last 30 days where they're less than 50% of normal. And other little hot spots across the state that will start to show up uh, on that drought monitor map if we don't get significant rainfall uh, in the next few weeks. And unfortunately, as we showed with the first couple of slides, fire danger is still a concern over parts of the state. This is the relative greenness map uh, from the Oakley, uh, Oklahoma Mesonet OK Fire Program. Uh, basically, it takes the wettest uh, or the greenest pixels you see throughout the year. Uh, and for the current time frame, it compares it to those uh, greenest pixels on record. Um, and we see the Oklahoma wheat belt showing up quite nicely. Uh, at least right now, the Oklahoma wheat crop does look pretty good. Uh, it only has a couple of months to go to harvest. So hopefully we can keep the hailstorms, any really late uh, unusual freeze events uh, from coming back. Um, but you can see out here in Northwest Oklahoma, um, still extremely uh, brown and yellow and lots of dormant and dead vegetation out in this area of the state. Uh, the green out here you see in the panhandle are those uh, irrigated fields, but you can see around those irrigated fields, lots of fuel for fires, so wildfires. So when those certain conditions crop up like we see today, um, that's when you can get those big time fires like we saw uh, last month there and the month of uh, February and March as well. But also notice up here in Osage County, still pretty dry up there. Uh, with not a lot of green up. So um, wildfire danger, until we get significant rainfall in those areas, will still be a problem uh, and we get some green up, which will cut down on that wildfire danger quite, uh, quite readily. <clears throat> One of the things to get concerned about when we look at these uh, patterns uh, looking back in time is we just came out of a, one of the a big El Nino events. It wasn't super strong, but it was labeled strong. Um, so when we look at the previous uh, strong, the super strong events that we've seen, 1983, 1998, 2016, the June through August periods, the summer months uh, in Oklahoma were hotter and drier than normal. Uh, and in fact, in some cases, they were much above normal in temperature, much uh, below normal precipitation. Um, so the good news here, after I try to alarm you about that, is we only have three data points. So it's not like we have a lot of data to back this up. Just something to keep in mind after some of these previous big El Nino events. Um, those summers were not too pleasant in Oklahoma. So uh, now if we can get a lot of uh, uh, precipitation in the next couple of months, maybe we can uh, uh, head off any troubles uh, before they erupt in a, in a hotter and drier than normal summer. But if this does occur, if we do see a hotter than normal conditions and drier than normal conditions, we will be looking at, uh, we will be on the lookout for more flash drought conditions. Now these maps are a little bit dated. Uh, they were released almost a month ago. There will be a new set of these maps come out in just a couple of days on Thursday. So uh, take these with a grain of salt, but at least last month's projections for June through August that did uh, predict uh, once again, increased odds of above normal temperatures and uh, increased odds of below normal precipitation, at least for most of the state, uh, but especially out across the western, uh, uh, very far western parts of Oklahoma and the Panhandle. So uh, this would certainly not be a good uh, uh, thing to have happen if it does occur. Um, and of course, this is already a little bit out of date. The, the drought outlook through June, that was released last month, it did show drought uh, expected to develop out across northwest Oklahoma, and of course that's already occurred. The question is, will that drought still be in place when we get to the end of June when this map is good for? Uh, once again, that still remains to be seen. But again, we will get uh, new maps from the Climate Prediction Center with both uh, the, the summer outlook and also um, the, uh, the drought outlook for the next three months. We'll get that on Thursday. 
So the drought concerns for fall 2024 uh, through spring of 2025, I would call those high, simply because here comes another La Nina. Um, I think we're pretty much past the spring predictability barrier uh, where we do see problems predicting uh, those sea surface temperature uh, conditions and the, the ENSO predictions um, through this spring barrier uh, for the next fall. But La Nina is, uh, looks like much more likely now um, for that time frame. In fact, it's probably going to come back during the summer. Not really much to worry about in the summer months, um, but when we do get into the fall and, and winter when that starts to impact Oklahoma, that will be something to be concerned about. Uh, much like El Nino, when we, when we disrupt the sea surface temperatures down here in the Equatorial Pacific, we see associated atmospheric uh, circulation changes. Sort of a chicken and egg thing. Uh, both things lead to the other. It's not really known which comes first. Um, but what we do see is that the jet stream pushed farther to the north. And again, we're talking about the fall through early spring type impact for Oklahoma. So let's say uh, October-ish through April-ish. Um, but peaking in the in the winter months, uh, but it does tend to bring the southern tier of the United States drier than normal conditions and warmer than normal conditions, um, and we do see that in the amalgam of all uh, La Nina years. Um, we do see uh, drier than normal conditions, especially for the southern half in Oklahoma. But I think if you look in more recent years, you'll see that impact even more greatly out across western and Oklahoma and the Panhandle. So uh, again, this is why I would uh, term our drought conditions for fall through spring high, simply because of that La Nina. And, you know, more often than not, when we see La Nina conditions, we do see drought conditions develop somewhere in the state of Oklahoma. So this strong El Nino is fading uh, and it will transition, transition to La Nina in the next couple of months after it goes through the neutral conditions. You can see this uh, this uh, forecast from the Climate Prediction Center. Um, we do see the uh, the model predictions start to dip down from El Nino territory, which is above five degrees centigrade, uh, above normal temperatures out in the equatorial Pacific waters. And then we go through the uh, neutral conditions, minus 0.5 centigrade to up to 0.5 degrees centigrade. Uh, and then anything below that 0.5, we get into La Nina conditions. Um, so when we get into the March, uh, the May, June, July time frame, we are starting to get closer to that um, uh, La Nina condition. Um, but when we get out here into the uh, to the later in the summer months, almost certainly we will be in La Nina conditions. Again, nothing to worry about really uh, when we see these La Nina conditions in the warm season in Oklahoma. It's really when we get into the fall uh, through the early spring. Um, when we see those impacts start to uh, unfold. Uh, we can see that on this uh, bar graph. Uh, so once again, red is El Nino. We are certainly in El Nino right now, but we do see the gray uh, neutral conditions take over for the next uh, couple of three month periods. When we get into June, July, August, that's when we start to see the La Nina chances go up about 60%. Uh, at the current forecast, we'll see La Nina through the June through August period. And then we get into the next fall and for the winter, uh, we're up into the 85% uh, plus uh, category for that La Nina. So that's a little bit cause for concern when we get into that time frame. Uh, we look at the drought monitor time uh, series for the, from all the way back to when the drought monitor started back in uh, January 2000. And again, this is just for Oklahoma, and we go all the way through um, the current time frame. Again, the, the, the colors are pretty easy to determine. If you see the reds and the, dark, uh, the darker uh, uh, colors, those are the higher intensity uh, droughts. Um, but you do see these uh, La Nina conditions. Uh, so each one of these brackets is a La Nina. Uh, and yet you can see those match up pretty well with the drought conditions in Oklahoma. So La Nina 2001, 2002, uh, not too bad a drought, but it was certainly devastating to uh, the Oklahoma wheat crop back then. Uh, 2005, 2006, a pretty stout little drought right there. Right there. Once again, a, a devastating drought for um, the wheat crop, but also a very uh, terrifying uh, wildfire season. One of our worst wildfire seasons on record. 
occurred from that uh, late uh, late fall 2005 through early spring 2006, 2008, 2009. Again, the biggie of 2010, 15. Certainly, we didn't have the La Nina conditions throughout that entire frame, but we really got it started with one of the, the strongest uh, La Ninas on record back 2010, 2011. That really got us started. Um, and then, of course, that worked through the 2011, 2012 period as well. 2017, 2018, another uh, La Nina period. And then, of course, our triple dip La Nina that really kept us in drought uh for the last three years so i'm not just uh making this up when i say the the, the la ninas tend to bring us uh drought conditions in oklahoma they can certainly get us started in the cool season uh headed towards that direction they tend to cut us down a little bit on that precipitation in early spring uh, and that uh, tends to set the set the, the the scene for the uh for the rest of the spring through through the summer months it really gets those droughts started so uh, again, that's the reason for the the concern for drought as we get into uh, to the cool season um, and into early next year. So forecasts and outlooks. Um, so for the next seven days, we do continue to look dry up in the northwestern part of the state, where that uh, flash drought is continuing to intensify. Uh, better chances down across southeast Oklahoma, of course. Now you're going to say, what else is new? That's, but this is basically climatology uh, for Oklahoma. So um, increasing amounts down in the southeast. But we do need to get significant moisture up here in northwest Oklahoma, north central Oklahoma. Maybe we can uh, re alleviate some of these drought concerns up here in east central Oklahoma, however. Um, so, but again, the northwestern third looks to remain mostly dry. When we look at the outlooks for uh, basically through next week from the Climate Prediction Center, we do see increased odds of above normal temperatures. That would not be welcome considering we have flash drought conditions and we're getting well into the warm season. Like I said, uh, increase in temperatures does, does go hand in hand with increasing drought, but we also see increased odds of above normal precipitation. And again, this is during the rainy season. So when we see above normal precipitation odds increased in the rainy season that's a good thing we just have to have this happen finally uh not only down here in southeast oklahoma and south central oklahoma where it keeps happening up in the central oklahoma but also out here in northwest oklahoma uh they really need to get the get their share of moisture as well okay my final thoughts so drought has faded considerably after nearly three years starting back in august 2021 Thanks for help. Uh, thanks for the help from El Nino. It certainly did uh, did get us in a better situation this time of year than where we were the last couple of years. The drought had three smaller episodes, each started by a flash drought, making one longer drought episode. I still think we're in the same uh, drought episode. I still think we're we're considering this 2021 through 2024. Uh, I don't think we're, if we do go back into drought, I don't think we're starting in a whole new drought. I think this is one longer period drought. Um, El Nino, it's fading. This is normal for this time of year. La Nina is probably next. This is also normal. It's normal to see um, a La Nina develop after a strong El Nino event. Um, so nothing unusual there. And there, uh, finally, there will still be drought in Oklahoma after this week, uh, no matter what type of rainfall we see. In other words, drought isn't going away anytime soon, unfortunately. So we'll just have to see where we go from here. Uh, and that's it for me. Thank you.